Good morning, Bear Creek family. Please join us as we begin to praise and worship our Lord this Palm Sunday. Here we go. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. You're hidden glory in creation. Su nombre es 
come to you thanking you for your great power that can wash over the entire land. Lord, it is in your name that we pray. The name of Jesus that has power, that gives us victory. The beautiful name of Jesus that can wipe us clean, Father God. Lord, I pray for our nation today that we can just ask for your forgiveness. I thank you that you have brought us closer to you, that you have let us see your face during this time. I pray for everyone to fall on their knees to you today, Father, in reverence of you. and Just ask for your forgiveness and ask for you to come into our hearts today, to come into our lives and just wash us, Lord. Wash away the sickness, wash away whatever is coming against your land, Father. In this time, we don't want anything else but you, nothing else but you, Father. Lord, we're sorry for, for whatever we've let get in the way. And we just pray for you to come in, Father, nothing but you.
just ask for you today to come into our hearts and you don't owe us anything no blessings how great would it be to just have you with us in front of us with us beside us your holy presence we thank you that we can enter into worship freely just coming to see you, to hear from you, to just feel you, Lord God. And so we thank you for this beautiful time with you, this beautiful moment that we can have, where we can just enter in, where we can seek your face and just fall at your feet. And so I say thank you, Lord, for loving us as much as you do. things that we've done. You still love us. Just come into our hearts today, Father, and be with us throughout these days and throughout the week. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. So we just want to thank you for worshiping with us, for spending time with us this morning, and for just allowing the Holy Presence to come to your homes. Right now, I would like to introduce Pastor Leo, and he's going to come and bless you with a a word of God. Amen. Thank you again so much for being with us on another Sunday morning. Uh, God is good, uh, just uh, knowing that you are there and that uh, you're praising God along with everyone else who is uh, uh, connected uh, with us on today. I I appreciate that so much very much. Call a friend and let them know that you're listening to the, uh, to the broadcast today, the, the worship service, and uh, what I'd love for you to do is just uh, get the family around and, and let's, let's talk to God uh, together. This is prayer time at Bear Creek, and, and we want you to know that God is always there for you, that you can trust God, and that, and that God will see us uh, through this as well. Let, let us pray today. Lord, we pray that you would look upon us with your eyes of mercy with your healing touch and your life-giving power to every cell of our body and the entirety of our soul. We pray that you would cleanse us, that you would purify us, that you would restore us to wholeness and strength in the service and in your kingdom. God, we love you so very much. You are our God. You're the joy of our grateful hearts. You're the author of our faith, the vision of our hope, and the object of our love. Help us to see that future of a a future of wellness, God, that we can see a healing of our land. And God, we pray that as we come at this time, seeking refreshment and peace for our souls. As we lean into you, show us your mercy, relieve us of our fears and our anxieties, and grant us a quiet mind and an expectant heart that by the assurance of your presence that we may forever learn how to abide and trust in you. We praise you, Lord Jesus, that you just continue to keep us strong. Keep us as a family together. Help us to always lean and depend upon you. Continue to protect our our healthcare workers and guide our leaders and give them wisdom, Father, and help us all that we may give you glory as we surrender to you. We praise you and we thank you. In your son Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. God has been so good to us through all of this. I mean, I knew it gets tough sometime, and, and sometimes you just don't know what to do, and all you can do is just pray. But it's a good thing 
uh, share with somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Let them know that, that, that God loves them through all that you're going through. Let them know that the presence of, of God is with you as well. As we prepare our hearts for giving today, remember, we give out of a grateful heart, knowing that God supplies all of our needs. And so during this time of uncertainty and just not knowing exactly what all will take place, keep trusting God. Keep trusting God. As God blesses you, then you bless God as well. And we do that by giving. So as you give today, think of how God is blessing. Let us pray. God, bless these offerings, Lord Jesus. Bless as we give today. Let these gifts, Lord Jesus, be to your glory, to your honor. We praise you and thank you for those that have, Lord Jesus, and their giving. We also pray for those that are experiencing unemployment, those that are experiencing a hard time, God. Continue to provide for them. Help us that we might be there for them as well. God, continue to lead and guide us all as we give to you and trust, Lord Jesus, that you will provide for us. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember, just give online. All you have to do is click and give, and God will continue to bless you as well. If you have any uh, need for someone to uh, help you with uh, giving electronically, just call Marsha at the office, and she can help you with that as well. Let's continue to praise God today as we lift up the name of Jesus Christ. On this Palm Sunday, we read from the Word of God. Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. When they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus gave two disciples a task. He said to them, go into the village over there. As soon as you enter, you will find a donkey tied and a coat with it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that their master needs them. He sent them off right away. Now this happened to fulfill what the prophet said. Say to daughter Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and riding on a donkey and on a coat, the donkey's offspring. The disciples went and did just as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the donkey and the coat and laid their clothes on them. Then he sat on them. Now a large crowd spread their clothes on the road. Others cut palm branches off the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds in front of him and behind him shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred. Who is this? They asked. The crowds answered, it is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Judea. The word of God for the people of God. And everyone said, thanks be to God. Well, today we start a journey, a journey with our Savior during the final days here on earth. We trace the steps of Jesus from his entrance into Jerusalem all the way to Resurrection Sunday. Jesus' ministry, starting with his baptism and, and wilderness experience up to his crucifixion, numbered 1,000 days. Join us as we focus on the last seven days. Seven days with Jesus, Holy Week, here at Bear Creek. Well, Matthew devotes about 30% of his gospel uh, to these final days of Jesus. Mark allocates about 40% and Luke only 20 unless you count Jesus' journey to Jerusalem, and then that changes to about 62%. John dedicates about 47% of his gospel to the events of Holy Week and beyond. As I was studying, I realized first that God will get you to where God wants you. Think about that. God will get you to where God wants you. Jesus had no doubt about fulfilling his purpose. For the Son of Man, the scripture says in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. On three separate occasions, Jesus told his disciples, we are going up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked, flogged, and crucified. 
On the third day, he will be raised to life. When you know your purpose, when you know who you are and whose you are, there is nothing that can stop you from fulfilling your purpose but you. Jesus knew no matter what he had to face that he would fulfill his destiny. We must remember that as a church, what God has called us to do. God has called us to love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our strength, and then to love our neighbors ourselves. And then he asks us, or really commands us, to make disciples. Secondly, notice, he asks you to give up your donkey. On this day, five days before his death, Jesus sends two disciples saying to them, go into the village over there, as soon as you enter, you will find a donkey tied up with a coat with it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that their master needs them. And he sent them off right away. The one thing I want to encourage you today is to give up your donkey. Give up your donkey. The Lord needs it. See, Jesus had declared himself king and everything in the kingdom belongs to the king. Everything we own belongs to the king. We are only stewards, managers. The Lord needed his donkey, but what does the Lord need from you? Think about it, is your donkey a, uh, a beautiful voice? Is your donkey a, uh, a beautiful voice that we can use in the choir? Is your donkey a smile? that can be used to, to greet individuals? Is your donkey a gift of money that can be given to build God's kingdom? What is your donkey? In the prophecy in Zechariah chapter nine, verse nine, it says, everyone in Jerusalem, celebrate and shout. Your king has won a victory and he's coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey. He comes on a coat of a donkey. You see, my king, <laughs> Your king on a donkey, a male donkey. Have you ever thought about that? Here we are, Jesus on a donkey. But you see, Jesus had no problem. Jesus had no problem riding on a donkey. Remember, Jesus knows who he is. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. Riding on a donkey is richly symbolic and goes back to King David. The royal animal is what David rode on. He rode on a donkey. It was steady and it could handle the rocky terrain of Palestine. Can you imagine your king on a donkey? Well, third, I need you to choose the right king to follow. It would not be so bad and it wouldn't look so bad if Jesus was like the only one entering Jerusalem at this time. But when you have two other processions and these processions, neither of them are riding on a donkey, neither of them is riding on a donkey. Imagine the people comparing your king riding on a donkey to them. Well, in a letter, Pontius Pilate wrote to his friend Seneca in Rome. He said, quote, I have come up as usual for the great festival, the Passover. It amused me, he said, when I received your letter just before leaving Caesarea to find you complaining of the congestion in Rome. You should be here, he says. Judea has been filling up for weeks past. They come by tens of thousands weeks in advance and spread over the country visiting their friends and relatives, searching out their villages, their fathers came from, and making pilgrimages to the places where their history began. You see, the population of Jerusalem at this time was about 80,000, but with Passover, it swelled to over 200,000 people. Imagine Pilate arriving in Jerusalem with half his force, that's 2,000 men. But he wasn't the only one. That was another one. Later, he writes Seneca that King Antipas was already Herod Antipas. He was also in Jerusalem. Herod Antipas was the son of Herod, 
the, the great, the one that we talk about at Christmas time, the one that was trying to kill Jesus when he was born. I need you to think about it. Choose the right king. Fourth, ask God to open your eyes in order to see what you can't see. Jesus' final days remind me so much of the fear that's in our world today. To live in fear, I believe, if we're not to live in fear, our eyes must be opened. Sometimes we think that we are surrounded by the enemy, that we're surrounded by the enemy. No matter how often you look and, and whatever name you give to that enemy, some of us look and we think that others are better off than we are, whether it's health or whether it's finances. We, we look around, education, other successes. With all the fear in the world, how are we to feel secure? Know who your king is. Know who your king is. Revelation 19 and verse 16 says, he has a name written on his robe and his thigh. King of kings, Lord of lords. It reminds me of Elijah, his servant in 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 16 through 17. When the king's army surrounded the city and his servant asked Elijah, he says, what shall we do? Listen what he says. Elijah answered him and said, have no fear. Those who are with us are more than those who are against us. The Living Bible says it this way. For our army is bigger than theirs. Then Elijah made a prayer to the Lord, saying, Lord, let his eyes be open so that he may see. And the Lord made the young man's eyes open. And he saw all the mountain was full of horses and carriages of fire surrounding Elijah. Oh, if we could see. Oh, if we could see what we can't see, we would feel so secure, even in this time where it seems like the enemy is all around. Psalm 91, verses 9 through 11 says this, The Lord Most High is your fortress. Run to him for safety, and no terrible disasters will strike you or your home. God will command his angels to protect you wherever you go. I like to close with this question. Who is this king of glory? A Psalm of David in Psalm 24 verses 7 through 10 says, Mighty gates, lift up your heads. Ancient doors, rise up high. So this glorious king can enter. Who is this glorious king? The Lord strong and powerful. The Lord powerful in battle. Mighty gates, lift up your heads. Ancient doors, rise up high so that the glorious king, the king of glory can enter. And who is this glorious king? Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts, the Lord of heavenly hosts. He is the glorious king, the king of glory. Praise with me, the king of glory. And you can say it. Jesus is our King. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you so very much for the King of glory entering our lives, entering our world, making all the difference in the world. Help us today as you open our eyes so that we can feel secure, knowing that we are not surrounded by the enemy, but that you are surrounding us. Hallelujah. Thank you so very much for loving us, protecting us, and letting us know that we can trust you, the King of kings and Lord of lords. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, today's a great day to invite Jesus Christ to come into your life. Allow him to be your King, the Lord of your life. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, thank you for loving me so much that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross just for me. Come into my life, Lord. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my King. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. If you prayed that prayer, then I believe with you that God has sent his son to live in you. He is now the king of your heart, the Lord of your life. Continue to trust God. If you don't have a church home, I would love to be your pastor. Bear Creek is a great place for you to grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. You can text me at 832-773-4901. I would love to hear from you. Love to be your pastor and also just start this journey with you and allow you to know that there are things that you can see as you allow God to open your eyes, that you can be secure in Jesus Christ. I look forward to seeing you all next week. And remember, as you continue to allow God to move in your life, that God loves you so very much. See you next week.